Hi everyone, I'm Sandra, the Naked Chef, and um, today I'm wearing a white. I decided to just keep my beanie on because um, I went to the store and it was freezing fucking cold. But, so let's keep the white going on with my uh, apron here. Okay, now, right now, we're going to make some ribs. I got pork ribs, and I bought a bunch from Costco. And um, I'm going to teach you how to make them really good. So, first, after we get our apron on, we are going to... Um, we are going to get the ribs. I have them right here. And... I need a knife. 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 Yeah. I got a sharp knife. Okay, so I'm gonna cut these open. Let's see where can I cut this open? Okay. And and this is kind of just peeling apart. That's good. Now, okay, let's get the ribs. How many should I fix today? Should I fix two and freeze one? That might be a good idea. So, right now, let's see. I am going to get some foil to put this on. Um, okay. So this is what you do. These are pork ribs. They look fabulous. And my counter is clean. Not that it really matters because I'm only cooking for me anyway. But uh, so the ribs usually have a membrane on them. And you want to take it. If you can get it, sometimes you need a paper towel, which is a good way to get it so your fingers aren't slipping. But the reason why you want the membrane off is because um, it makes the um, meat more like fall off the bone and easier to take apart, as well as um, you can get your flavor in there that you want um it makes it so it can soak into the meat and not um get blocked by the membrane so let me figure out how to get this off there i think i got most of the membrane off i'm not sure it was tough i had to use knives and shit so anyway now that you have your membrane off, you want to um, season it with salt and pepper on both sides. You can also um, choose to do other um, herbs or seasonings if you like. Um, what I'm going to do is... Let's see. So I have a bunch of different stuff in here and in here. Let's see what I got. Oh, 
sweet and spicy cayenne. This is wing salmon shrimp power. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab like a seasoning salt. I think this is good. I mean, I like this to use for my jerky as well as I like it for everything else too. Um, I also have meat magic if you prefer that. Um, I have two different kinds of meat magic. Here's one for poultry. Um, I don't know. I don't think um, pork is considered poultry. But it's pretty close. Let me see. Mm. Nah. Let me see how this one is. Mm. I don't know if I want to do that either. Let's see what this one is. Yeah, this smells like good. Yeah. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to season your meat with whatever seasoning you're doing on both sides. And this one's cool. It says it's Memphis inspired. It's a private selection I got from King Sewers. It says it's tangy, sweet, and spicy. And it's got um, alderwood, smoked sea salt, brown sugar, cane sugar, vinegar powder, um, onion, paprika, chipotle pepper, rice concentrate, ginger, thyme, rosemary, savory, and extractives of paprika and cloves. So, I'm just going to sprinkle it on. And kind of rub it all. Just like maybe pat it. Don't like just super rub it in. Just kind of like pat it so it sticks to it. And it's there. And it's kind of just like on it. And flip it over. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. And I'm kind of just going to pat it and move it around so that it covers the entire piece of meat. And so there it is. And maybe the other one I'll season differently. I mean, just salt and pepper works or like you can do um, garlic powder and um, paprika and chipotle pepper is good. Or also you can get a Cajun seasoning and do it or anything you really want to do with it. Um, it's basically your choice of depending on um, what um, kind of taste you have. So then, now that I've seasoned my meat, now we're going to wrap our uh, meat in foil so that it's protected. And then I have a half sheet pan, like a professional baking pan, which is really good. Like, I love it because, I mean, I can bake whatever I want. It fits, like, a bunch of stuff on it. Like, you can bake um, a bunch of cookies on it or whatever you want. And I can probably fit both racks of ribs on here. Oops. 
one purple one. Oh yeah, I ripped it on a bit, but that's okay. There we go. Now we covered it. Now we're gonna put both ribs on the tray. And they fit perfectly, see? There's the other one. They're both seasoned with the same seasoning that I used. And then you put them in the oven. It's heated to 275. And um, then you leave them in there for four hours. And then after they're done, um, you will um, put them under the broiler. Let's see what my thing says. So after they're done, you put them under the broiler. Um, with the barbecue sauce. So like after you take them out, after the four hours, you brush them with barbecue sauce, or whatever sauce you feel like, and then um, do it on the top rack of the oven and, and turn the broiler on high for three to four minutes until the barbecue sauce begins to caramelize. Um, just, and then like, just keep it a close eye on them so it doesn't burn. And, um, then they're done. Uh, let's see, I have removing membrane tips. You place the re ribs meat side down on a cutting board, locate the thin membrane. Um, this membrane can be tough when cooked. To remove, use a knife gently. Slide under the membrane when using your fingers. Pull the membrane away from the bones. If slippery or difficult, remove use a kitchen towel to take holes of it and pull, or a paper towel. Um, so with my membrane, it was kind of tough to remove. So I like I used like knives to just like scrape it off, and hopefully it's all off. I mean, but um, after the four hours, it's done. Just uh. Put the barbecue sauce on, and I like to use, where is it? Um, I have this sauce goddess, and I think, yeah, it says it's amazing on ribs. This sweet and spicy. Um, that's good. I also have Sweet Baby Ray's. And I also have this rib glaze that I wanted to try for the longest time. And it's from RoastedChili.com. And uh, the, um, the uh, company that comes to Colorado and they set up like tents for stands um, and they have their... Um, their roaster uh, there. It's the green chili company that um, I got this from. It's a salted vodka rib glaze. I've always wanted to try it and now I get to try it. But um, I hope this is good too. I'm not sure. Let's taste it. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, so I have roasted chili, salted vodka, rib glaze, and I might um, do some Sweet Baby Ray's too. They both kind of taste similar, but um, these are the things that I live by the book. 
Now look at that. That just like fell right off the bone as I like put it on my plate. That's how ribs should be is just fall off the bone. Like meat that just comes right off. And that's what you get if you cook it up. 275 for four hours and then broil it for a few minutes after the sauce gets put on.